The next area we can focus in on is going to be with human capital. And human capital is going to be tied along with the idea of labor because human capital is just going to be some type of investment in your own education, experiences, or your skills. So basically by listening to this lecture, by coming to class, you know exactly that you are increasing your human capital, you are gaining knowledge, you are gaining your education, and that will help to make you a more effective and productive worker later on in life. The big sort of idea with investment in human capital is, is what is the optimal amount of human capital that you guys should undertake? And the same issues that we saw with physical capital are going to appear here as well. So with physical capital, you had to have some type of upfront cost today, but you are only going to see the benefits of that investment later on, so that future income streams. The same idea applies with investment in human capital. So by attending college, you have to have some type of upfront cost today. You have to pay for tuition, your books, all the fees, but you're not going to see the benefits of you getting the degree until later on in life when you actually get a job. So there's a very big discussion nowadays on whether or not investing in education is good for people nowadays. There are a lot of people that say, no, not, no, education is not really great for us. We're investing these hundreds of thousands of dollars. We're going into debt and we're not getting anything in return out of that. But for the vast majority of us, if we're smart about our education choices and keep our costs relatively low, then we can go ahead and say that investment in education and human capital is going to be a very, very good thing for us, especially once we get into our working careers. So it's one way to help differentiate yourself from everybody else within the country. So just take a guess based on the statistics. How many people do you believe that are age 25 and older within the United States hold a high school diploma? That percentage is going to be really, really high. So about 90% of people age 25 and older living in the United States, they hold a high school diploma. So if you thought high school was hard, it really was the easiest part of your life. How many people do you think of that same age group, 25 and older, have a bachelor's degree, a four-year degree? You might think that that percentage might be relatively high as well, maybe in the 60 or 70 percent, but the statistics only show us that only about 35 percent of people age 25 and older have a four-year degree or a bachelor's degree. So I can show you the st statistics right here. So 90 percent of people age 25 and older have a high school or GE, high school diploma or a GED, but only about 35 percent of people of that same age group hold a bachelor's degree or four-year degree. And that percentage gets lower and lower as you get with higher degrees, with a master's, with a PhD, so I'm actually part of the 1% in something, so that's fantastic. But as you can see with all of this, there is some type of disjunct between the high school and bachelor's degree. So there's a lot of people that basically say, hey, this upfront cost of paying tuition, going to school, these opportunity costs are much too high for me to go ahead and waste four to six years of my life getting a bachelor's degree because we don't sense that the benefits are worth it. But I'm going to go ahead and show you a model and show you a few statistics why for the vast majority of us, if we are smart about where we attend college and exactly keeping our costs low, we can go ahead and see that the benefits are going to be very, very good for us that do finish college, our college degrees and get that four-year degree and beyond. So with all of this, we can go ahead and give you a few statistics behind this, comparing those that don't have a high school diploma to those that do have one and all the way beyond that to show you some type of economic outcomes. So the unemployment rate in 2018, if you didn't have a high school diploma, was the highest at 5.6%. As we notice, the more education that you get, the better your economic outcomes are going to be for unemployment. So 4.1% for those that have a high school diploma. If you have a bachelor's degree, that unemployment rate drops all the way down to 2.2% and lower for even more higher level and professional degrees. And also take a look at your median annual earnings. If you only have a high school diploma, you can only expect to earn about $37,000 every single year. But if you bump that up to a bachelor's degree, you almost get more than double that. So $62,000, the median annual earnings for those that have a bachelor's degree. And more and more as you get more and more education. So $94,000 for a PhD. I really wish this were true of me. But basically, as you can see right here, there are positive economic outcomes with the more education that you do get. And of course, just like in most of economics, we can go ahead and apply some type of model and theories to this. So suppose that we go off, want to go ahead and compare you yourself, you starting out from high school and deciding whether or not you want to go ahead and make this investment 
investment in human capital or just go ahead and straight go into the workforce. So take a look at this red line right here, which is high school, which says that at age 18, you graduate from high school and you decide that, hey, I hate school. I hate education. Let's just go ahead and go out into the workforce. If you do so, you notice that your earnings are always going to be positive throughout the rest of your life because you have a job, you get some type of positive income from that. You notice that it starts to increase as you get more and more as you get more and more experience. So that improves your buying power, your income as well. And then it starts to decline as you get older and don't work as much until you finally retire at age 65. So if you don't go to college, basically you say, hey, my earnings are always going to be positive throughout my life. However, suppose that you go ahead and make that investment in college. So you have four years of direct cost. You have tuition, you have books, you have the fees, you have the parking fees, you have the athletic fees. There's a lot of fees with attending college. But these are the direct costs that you are going to have to have for four years or longer, depending on how long you go to college, for, your, for the start of your college experience. So from age 18 to 22, let's assume that you have these four years of direct cost. But what happens after you graduate? Hopefully you do find a job and you're going to notice that your earnings are going to supersede that of those that just attended high school right away. And your earning potential is going to be much greater. As you get more experience, your earnings go up as well. And basically throughout the rest of your life, your earnings should be positive too. So basically what we see right here, the difference between this green line and the red line are the benefits that you get for attending college over that of high school. So taking these benefits and subtracting out these direct costs and the foregone earnings basically are the benefits that you are going to receive for attending college versus you deciding not to attend college and just go out into the workforce. And for the vast majority of people that are smart about their college choices, they do notice that these are going to be positive benefits and not negative benefits. So for the vast majority of the population, it does make sense to go ahead and attend college. And there are statistics and data that shows you exactly what that dollar amount of these benefits are going to be. So taking these benefits minus the direct cost, minus the foregone earnings, what the specific dollar amount is. So what colleges and what universities do you think this benefit is going to be the highest? So the differences between the benefits, the foregone earnings, and the cost. What colleges and universities come to mind? Obviously, it's probably going to be more in terms of the Ivy League schools, and also in terms of the service academies. So here, the number one ranked university in terms of the best value college is the United States Merchant Marine Academy, which is a service academy. And we want number the number that we want to focus in on here, it's a 20-year net ROI. So roughly about $1 million, not $1,100,000 in terms of the 20-year net ROI. And that tells us that graduates of the United States Merchant Marine Academy can, on average, expect to earn $1 million more than that of a person that just didn't go to college from high school, just went out into the labor force and worked for 20 years. So that's a huge difference by making this four year sort of initial outlay in terms of initial cost, in terms of tuition, you can expect to earn $1 million more than that of a person that did not attend college straight out of high school. And we noticed that, yes, the vast majority of Ivy League schools and top tier universities are going to show up in the top 10 and top 20 as well. So there's Harvey Mudd, there's a CIT, California Institute of Technology. We also see uh, Stanford, Princeton, so very high-ranking universities within this ranking. So there's about 2,000 universities in this, in this entire list. Where do you think Florida academies, Florida universities and colleges are going to lie right here? How about FIU in this instance? So Florida International University actually ranks pretty high on this list right here. So ranked number 385 out of these 2,000 colleges and universities with a 20-year net ROI of $339,000. So on average, if you graduate from FIE, you can expect to earn $339,000 more than that of a person that just went into the labor force from high school 20 years later. And the re reason why we see that FIU ranks so are pretty much high on this list is because the cost of our tuition is fairly low compared to other universities. But something that we do want to hone in on a little bit more is this graduation rate, rate right here. So only about 56% of students here at FIU are going to graduate within six years, I believe. So here, yeah, that's exactly what this number tells us. And that's why there's been such a big push within the university, uh, why they've sort of been pushing this 30 credits every semester, graduate in four years, because they want to get these sort of metrics up. But that's something that I don't really see being feasible given the makeup of the student population, where the vast majority of you guys are working part-time or full-time, 
or have other obligations to go ahead and do. So while FIU does want to get this number up, it may not be feasible for us to do so. Unless we sort of inflate our grades and just really don't care about learning at all, then that's one way we can sort of do it. As we can see for other Florida universities, obviously FIT and also UF are going to rank highest among Florida universities, but we do see FSU, FAU, UCF also ranking decently high as well. So for the vast majority of countries that we, uh, for the vast majority of schools and universities that we see right here, we're going to see a positive net ROI, meaning that, yes, it is going to be a good thing for you to go ahead and make this investment in these particular colleges. However, there's are just a handful of colleges that give you a negative ROI. There's only about maybe 200 or 300 of these schools and universities that give you a negative ROI out of this entire list of 2,000. But can you imagine that if you went to this university, you have a negative 20-year net ROI. So if you went to, say, Mississippi Valley State University, this out of, with out-of-state intuition, that basically says that you are going to be earning $175,000 less than a high school graduate that didn't attend college and started working right away. So it would actually be better for you to just go ahead and not attend this college at all. And and the vast majority of colleges and universities that you see right here are either going to be private universities or colleges because they typically have a higher four-year cost. So paying, hey, $184,000 to, to get a college degree and probably not that great of an education at these particular locations, which is why we see this negative ROI right here. However, for the vast majority of colleges and universities that we do see, we do see this positive 20-year net ROI, meaning that for the vast majority of us, it does make sense for us to go to college and make that investment and human capital. So making this initial outlay for tuition, for these books, for the fees, and getting the reaping the benefits later on in life. So essentially here, this is the model, the most traditional model of human investment that we can see in under economics, where we just want to go ahead and compare the benefits of you attending college, subtracting out the foregone earnings, the opportunity costs, and the direct costs in order to showcase why making investments in human capital and getting an education is so important for you.